Hey paisanos, welcome to The Kingdom is Always Mushroomier, a show where four friends have chill discussions about Super Mario to distract themselves from the inevitable passage of time and their own rapidly waning ability to relate to the youth and uh, get to the golden time and various other Mario things. How, uh, how's everyone doing? Doing swell. Paisano. Oh yeah, we're supposed to actually introduce ourselves. Whoops. Um, I'm <laughs> Flare <Roped. laughs> I'm Rock the Jake. I'm Cyberlink. I'm Game Buddy. Hello, Game Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, so uh, this week on our podcast that we do all the time, uh, we're talking about a you know a Mario game that uh, what can we say it is a still to this day very controversial within the Mario fandom. Honestly, we've been doing this podcast for you know over a year now, and I'm shocked it took us this long to get to it. You know, it's kind of one of those things where we couldn't go into it right away because it's it's a lot to cover. That's true. It's uh, to me, it's kind of like a sticking point for a lot of us who have been growing up with Mario. Like, this is something we can't let go. And to and let's just get to it. We're talking about Super Mario sixty four today, everyone. Yep, mm. here we go. Really getting into Mario's rocky transition into three D. That's and right. Rocky is about as good a word for it as I can think of. When I think of this transition into three D, I just think, oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I hate to say that this is another one that, of course, I have a lot of nostalgia for. Like, I, I remember distinctly when I got this as a kid, and and I think I've said before, like, it's hard for me to be um, objective about it because, like, uh, you know, my my hands on that, that goofy old trident of a controller, like, <laughs> I kind of have a lot of those levels memorized, but... You know, sometimes just looking back, I, I I do wonder if like, am I am I just looking at this one through rose tinted glasses? You would think that way, because when, when I watch people play this game now, there's this sort of vibe of like, oh god, how do people like this? And, and you know, it's, it kind of like makes you question the stuff that you grew up with when other people are like trying to trying their best with this game and they're just struggling so much because of how yeah how dated it is now and how like. You know, it was a like you said, a rocky transition to 3D. We all knew Mario was 2D up to that point, and this was just oh, it took a lot of getting used to. And and I mean, like that's in a lot of ways, that's not the game's fault. Like there just wasn't really a good template in general for you know 3D games at that time. They were kind of flying blind there, but you know that doesn't necessarily make it I, I don't know fun to play or really enjoyable if you try and go back to it these days. Yeah, there's definitely something to be said about, like, when you were a kid, you're just excited to be playing a new game. But, like, when you go back to it as an adult, you're just like, oh, yeah, Mario does kind of just control like a drunk baby, doesn't he? Mm. <laughs> well, I got to say, like, doing this revisit, which it's been a long time since I've I've properly revisited this game. The first thing that stands out to me that brings, like, a whole bunch of memories floating back is... This opening narration from, well, she's the princess, but, you know, she calls herself Princess Toadstool, pause, Peach. And Peach. I, I guess, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm getting a little flustered here. It's just it's just all building up. But I, I understand how Nintendo probably wanted to unite the, like, the Japanese and the, like, American continuities of Mario. This just seems like a really clunky way to do it. Like, she was always Princess Toadstool, or, like, the princess. Like, all the old cartoons, like, the old games, like, she was the, the princess. And it just feels weird to tack on this... I don't know, is it her nickname? You know, to give them to give them credit, like they didn't throw everything away. Like like the thing that I always go to is like in a lot of the old Deke cartoons, like Luigi was kind of the the straight man and would always be like, you know, oh, I don't know, Mario. And it, I thought it was cool to see going forward that they kind of use that like for for Luigi's character. Like he's a little bit of he's not as brave as Mario, but I don't know. There was just a lot of like culture shock, like booting up this game and like, oh, like everything I grew up with with like isn't canon anymore it, it, it just took a little bit getting used to for me yeah and, that, and that's to say nothing of you know mario's voice which is completely at odds with literally everything we had heard of mario up to that point like you know we're so used to kind of a gruff kind of brooklyn accent sort of thing on mario from basically everything and now we've got this high-pitched italian voice i'm not even going to try to imitate it's like 
No, no, thank you. Like for my money, Peter Cullen is still the voice of Mario. Thank you very much. The first yeah. one, the guy, yeah. the guy who got it started. Uh, like, I'm just gonna say it, it's a little bit offensive. I think maybe to some people, like this this broad Italian stereotype. He's just coming out here and saying, "Oh, it's me, a Mario." I, I don't know. Like it, it feels. I, I, do you, does anyone else feel it's a little bit problematic? Yeah, because like even like even if you like let the controller sit for a while and and he goes to sleep just wherever he is, which you know that's a heck of a narcolepsy problem there. Like he like you'll hear him snore and then he'll eventually start going like oh spaghetti ravioli and I'm like Italians aren't just food, y'all. I I mean that's also a problem they had back in the old cartoons. I'm not gonna you know yeah look that's past true. that. But. The pasta thing is one thing, but yeah, <laughs> this is a. Uh... This is a cartoon Italian man, all right. I, I will definitely never forget the episode of the Super Show where a uh, poisoned Mario was revitalized back to life with a caveman pizza. <laughs> uh, I, I don't mean to overstep my boundaries. I did just have uh, my a member of my family did a like a, a 23 in me. And as someone who has a marginal amount of Italian in their ancestry. It doesn't really bother me. It is just, like you said, it's the presenting this as like, oh, this is the canon Mario now. And I look, I know this new guy, the voice actor, he was in those Mario uh, clubhouse games and teaches typing before this, so this is not technically his debut, but... Yeah, it it's it just takes a lot of getting used to. It it'll be yeah. it'll be hard going forward accepting that that this is Mario now. Yeah, I mean, how do you like say that voice actor's last name anyway? I, is it like Martini or something like Charlie Martini? I was gonna say it's Charles Martinet. Like everyone, it's been confirmed everywhere. It's Martinet with the hard T. Oh, okay. Uh, moving on from that. So I guess before we get into this. Yeah, this controversial game. Should we talk about just like a little bit of the stuff that was kind of leading up to it? You know, like some of the more experimental stuff. It's important to remember that this was coming off of like the last major Mario game was Yoshi's Island, which was, you know, a complete departure from everything that had you know come before. You know, some people will argue whether it's, you know, quote unquote mainline or spinoff because it technically is called Mario World 2, but it's not really. And it's like it's. And that's neither here nor there, but it is important to kind of think about where Mario was as a franchise at this time, which is part of the reason why it feels like such a, even this feels like such a drastic departure. It was already, they were already like getting away from the Mario formula that had worked so well up to that point. I think most people will say like the first four games were just like, you know, that's Mario in his truest form, you know, uh, but like the, then they were just like, okay, how do we like do something completely different? And then you're carrying around a baby for the most of the game. And I don't know, like most people will agree, like a lot of people will say that the Yoshi's Island is a, it was a big misstep. Yeah, I it, the the hardest thing for me to swallow is that like I'm supposed to believe that Mario's horse like has its own little society and it, it just seemed like a really weird like who whose idea was that? Like I uh, I mean again going back to the cartoons which now I'm realizing just is my continuity. Like you know, I accept Yoshi is kind of like a a child, a baby, but I mean the the fact that I'm supposed to believe that these writable lizards like have their own society and care about this. To, you know, not even get into the whole like oh, I guess the stork exists in the mushroom kingdom and ah uh, I it, it just gets me real frustrated. I you know, I I wouldn't say the game was like not enjoyable, but it was just like I don't know. I, who who thought we wanted to play as like Mario's friends outside of like you know, the doki doki panic of Mario 2. Plus it's like it completely breaks the continuity cuz up until this point, you know, everything we've been led to believe is that, you know, Super Mario Brothers is basically an isekai. Mario and Luigi are from Brooklyn, they get brought to the Mushroom Kingdom. That you know, it was like that in the cartoons, it was like that in the movie. It was that was more or less our understanding even the games, but now this uh game comes along and completely resets all that and it's like really that's the thing there's there's no concern for like the continuity they're very much like before 64 came out they were trying to be like well the japanese one is all that matters really like what you've got going over there that we don't really care about that's why we didn't see any like cave people in um we didn't see any in any of the cave people in uh yoshi's island like i, I was look i was looking for uktar and i was like yeah I, I know you love your uktar uktar is really important to me i don't guys um 
he's a, he's a real guy. It's like even in the Japanese, that was still the case because you know you go back and watch you know the Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach movie, and that's still the Mario Brothers live in the real world and get transported to the Mushroom Kingdom. Why did they ever get rid of those colors for Luigi? Like the the color the the you know the the differentiating Luigi's costume from Mario just worked so good in that movie, and then. I, they they just kind of threw it all away to give them both like like this matching uniform and, you know change the overalls to blue which I mean I get oh like, god oh, don't get me side on the overalls like seriously that's the denim first, yeah. that's standard the first you two know, games uh, the Super Show the OVA all with like the red overalls that I associate strongly with Mario that that fits his theme he's got the red hat the red overalls it made sense now I've got to like relearn his color palette while I'm drawing like fan art of him as a kid it just yeah like Mario like Mario three is a great game but it also fucked a lot of things up for me personally i'm sorry guys i get really upset about this sort of thing yeah that's not yeah. even going into like the fact that in mario world he's pink yeah like since when was mario ever pink i just mm, it's 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 a point of contention i it's it's like uh, we have established lore and we really should just stick with it and like you know circling back to yoshi's world which is basically what it is like like it's even more so it's it's a baby game because not only are you transporting a baby but like everything's drawn in crayons and stuff like it's a baby game and so i wonder if nintendo heard that outcry from the fans and was like okay well okay no more baby games here's fully 3d mario this is for adults now you know yeah i mean i mean they kind of made that baby step when they were doing super mario rpg with squared we got the you know the pre-rendered uh you know, models with that, which, you know, that's still a great style. That's never going to age poorly or anything, but of course not. Yeah, but the very idea that they decided to do, like, that's kind of, like, one of the biggest point issues I've had with, like, Mario going, like, anything that came after, like, the original four games when they were like, okay, let's move Mario to a different, like, play style, it never felt right to me. I just want to be, like, jumping around, you know? And then when they were like, okay, here's an RPG, okay, here's golf, and, you know, it's, here's a kart game, and, oh, I never really got too used to those. Yeah, and and to go back to the 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 um, I guess at the end of the day, like I wouldn't go as far as to say that sixty four is a bad game. It just doesn't feel like a good Mario game. Mm. Like the like you said, the 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 momentum just doesn't feel the same. Like okay, back in Mario three, Mario World, you had the the Tanuki suit, the leaf, the cape that that holding B to build up build up that momentum, and then it g- immediately gave you a reward with being able to make those big jumps and. I switching that to a control stick where it's just oh you know you tilt it really hard in one direction and Mario takes off and I know I've seen people like do all the tricks with like the long jumps and and the backwards jumps and but but that that is not intended in the game like that is they 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 give you this this limited move set and it again I wouldn't say it's bad it just feels different and different things are bad I think agree. that's real. I think we can all agree with that one. Uh, it is kind of frustrating when they have like so many moves. Like, how am I supposed to remember all these different kinds of jumps? You know, and and, th- and that's the big problem is that it feels really kind of directionless. Like, you know, they just kind of plop you down and let you figure out what you want to do. And it's like, you know, I I kind of get what they were going for. They wanted to give you that freedom of discovery, but at the same time, it's like. I feel like there should have been at least a little bit of signposting. Like I'm so used to, you know, I I have a more or less clear direction. You know, the path I take might not be, you know, always obvious, but generally speaking, if I make it to the right, I'll clear the level. Whereas this, it's like, I, you know, I wandered around for half an hour before I even figured out where the first level was. And after that point, it's another half hour just to figure out, okay, I'm here now. Where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? I've I've seen some uh, let's plays that that of of people that talk to the toads in the castle, and mm. a, apparently they they tell they like point in the right direction. But I, I guess what I'm saying is, how am I supposed to know to do that? Like, yeah. am I just supposed to press every button on the controller until I you know talk to the toad? I I don't know. That just seems like bad storytelling. Uh, I yeah, it's, it's it just doesn't work for me. I mean, like me, I, I personally, I don't even want to talk to the Toads because of Mario 1. Like, all they ever said was our princess is in another castle. And I get that negative feedback, and I'm like, I associate this character with negative talk, and I yeah. don't want to engage with that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I, I enjoyed Toad in the old Super Show, but, like, uh, in the games, like, the, the canonical to- the game Toads just have felt like a real, they're, they're a real downer to me. I, I feel bad even saying this, but it's kind of been on my mind for a while now. 
Mario games were never good. We only think they were good because it's what we grew up with. It's, you know, you've got all that nostalgia for it. But if you really, you know, look back at them, they were really just kind of a fad. And it's a wonder that people are still playing them because it's not... It's, why Why even bother? There's. It's a shame to be like, we've been doing this podcast for like a year now. And sort of like that has had me, it's given me the opportunity to sort of look back and realize that what, we, what we're gathering together to talk about is something that was never really there. You know, it's something that we thought was really special. And like when I'm replaying Mario 64, it's like, oh man, like this just isn't right. I, I sort of think about how good the original games were, but were they really that good? I, I've, I've popped them open on like Switch Online, and I'm just like, ah, the game. The, I keep dying on the games, and I feel like, you know, when you when you play a game and you die and you lose, and it just feels like the game is punishing me for trying to play it, and I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. The our our whole discussion has really just poisoned me against something that was very important to me growing up, and I. I, this game came out pretty close to Y2K, and I honestly wish that that Y2K bug was real and would have just wiped out all the files at Nintendo. Because, like, we, you know, we spent so much time, like, in the past year talking about all the good Mario stuff, and now I'm just realizing, like, it's all a sink pit. It's all a loss. And I don't know if I can keep going, man. I think I hate Mario now. I If he was a real man that existed in on Earth, I, I think I would be happy if I got news that he passed away and died. <laughs> Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so we reached the point where I hope Mario dies. So I feel like we're done at this point with this stupid gag. (laughs) Oh, Lord. Oh, it hurts so bad. (laughs) I hope Mario dies. I hope I get to watch him breathe his last. <laughs> well, oh. it, uh, unfortunately, I've seen that happen, but I had an extra life, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> this is all going to lead to us just uh, announcing that we're doing the Mario shorts going forward, and uh, <laughs> with Mario uh, running into things and getting hurt, and but he's okay. And also, he has mushrooms, and you know, you know what mushrooms do? Mushrooms are like drugs, man. It's funny. It's hilarious. Oh, dude. Look forward to our new dub series. This is the Super Mario Brothers Super Show later this year. <laughs> this is a piece of spaghetti on your overalls. <laughs> fuck you, Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, we kind of like, we were testing ourselves to see how long we could do that, listeners. Um, apparently not that long. <laughs> I, I knew as soon as I dropped the Mario was never good, Bob, it was going to only <laughs> yeah, be a matter yeah, of time. Yeah, yeah. We, we were running out of a highway on that one <laughs> when you said that. <laughs> we were running out of Toad's Turnpike. <laughs> But we slammed on the gas anyway. A lot of the stuff I said there wasn't true, but I do believe that Utah is an important part of the Mario franchise. We've been abandoned for so long now. And, that and Peter injustice. Cullen is still my Mario. <laughs> <laughs> well, people should really revisit Super Mario World, the cartoon, and look at like the the underpining themes of like that Mario and the Mushroom Kingdom. His friends are like m- weird missionaries to Dinosaur World, and U- Uktar <laughs> is you know benefiting. Like they build a school, but it- it's hard to wonder like generations after Uktar, like was that was their culture like just assimilated by the Mushroom Kingdom. I will say after this discussion, I want to start calling Charles Martinet Charlie Martini now. <laughs> I'm very much into Charles, this new nickname. Charles Martinet, everyone, for real, though. <laughs> um, uh, by the way, we really love Charles Martinet as a, as a performer. Oh, God, yes. Um, we are not of the crowd who feel like he should not be voicing Mario in anything for longer than a few sentences. I think he'd be really good at it. I've heard him do it before, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I I might I might kill for Charles Martinet. He would never ask me to do it. But I'm just put you, you would take initiative. Yeah, <laughs> you would roll initiative. <laughs> oh boy! So I guess we should probably talk about a good Mario game, huh? Well, funny enough, we were. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, this is just an excuse for us to actually talk about Mario 64. By the way, you know, we're all, we're all Sonic fans, but we do really like Mario a lot. It's, it was important to us as well. Yeah, it's weird up. that we haven't been doing a Sonic podcast, because I know how much we all love it. But, I know. You know. I've been really liking doing this podcast, so I can't complain that much. 
<laughs> um, I, it even goes back to like not to rehash like how I discovered Sonic, but because I started with Mario and then tragedy struck with a broken Super Nintendo, and I exchanged it for a Genesis, and so it was forever. Hey, these mascot platformers are pretty fun. Yeah, I had like I I had my Mario my Mario stuff at separate times to my Sonic stuff, but Mario was still like an important part to my journey as a as a video gamer as a child and i i just i just really love mario i like it you know say what you will about nintendo and people will say a lot and i will say a lot (laughs) i still think there's an enduring uh, there's an enduring charm to mario it's true and mario is like just a very accessible franchise because like I'll, I'll say like when when my wife and i first started dating like one of the first games that we did play together was uh new super mario brothers on the on the wii u and we played that whole game almost to completion there's a few of those star road levels that we got frustrated with but oh, yeah. but um we we've had a lot of fun with that and like you know mario mario has been i would say a, a light staple in our relationship <laughs> yep it's it's very ah there's just something about mario he is um you know his i guess technically mario's um uh good buddy kirby is shaped like a friend but mario is just like (laughs) yeah he seems like your buddy your pal like it's it's always like very comforting and um you know like i'm I'm replaying um (laughs) now that i think about it in my head the ludicrously named um super mario advanced for super mario brothers 3 on the switch (laughs) online and it really is just like oh man not only is this a solid game that like anyone can pick up to play it just feels like coming home (laughs) like honestly that is kind of how i feel about mario 64 like i had played you know one two three world yoshi's island before i didn't own them at the time but 64 is really the one that most sticks with me and has stuck with me over the years it's kind of like really iconic as well like so much stuff from mario 64 like has made a return in future 3d installments because it was the first 3d one and we will see lots of references it even up to odyssey where there was the whole little mario 64 world essentially and you even got to like buy that skin where mario was like polygonal and 64 bit and it was really cool i uh i've never actually beaten mario 64 like all the way through but i i do agree that like it's in in a way it's like coming home because like it's one of those games like especially now that's on the uh, switch online where i'm totally fine just booting that up and just running around and playing in it for a little bit yeah, it's like what I said earlier. It's just so very easily accessible. <laughs> that Princess Peach's Castle from this from that game is sort of what I will always always associate with Peach's Castle, like that version. Because while it's like a, you know a corrupted version that's been ruined by Bowser, it's a nice little place, isn't it? Uh, when it when it when it showed up again in Mario Kart 64, I was like, yes. well, I'm driving off the course <laughs> to get to that. Oh yeah, I, I would always like if I didn't have to beat the Grand Prix or whatever, I would just drive off the track on Royal Raceway and just drive right up to the castle and be like, I know there's some way I can get inside. I just have to try harder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> even, even in, uh, the original paper Mario where it is, you know, it's, it's a different Mario universe. It's a different, the, the, uh, the layout's the arch- a little different. Yeah. The architecture of the castle is a little different. It still was like, Oh my goodness. This is the castle though from Mario 64. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole crux of Mario 64, like kind of changing the, and in, in, instead of having linear levels like the the 2D games, they decided to do a this semi, I wouldn't say open world because it sure does, I, it seems to predate that, like what we think of open world games by quite a bit, but like big play fields. Like the, the levels yeah. in Super Mario feel like big playgrounds or play fields. To have like these missions with uh, each individual power stars just seems like a... I don't, it just translates really well to to still capturing that feeling of you are Mario and running around and jumping and getting coins, but narrowing the purview in these open fields to like one or two goals. It, it has always worked really well for me, and and the fact that it, that does translate into like the next few uh, Mar- 3D Mario games um, just I I think says like how solid a concept that is. 
the game has aged in many ways, and like uh, maybe it was just like the version I played on 3D All Stars that w- w- wasn't emulated super well. I definitely struggled with a lot of it, and like going back, but. I still think it's really solid and a lovely little game. Like, we joke about the rocky transition, but no, as far as transitions to 3D go, uh, Mario had it pretty good, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I Yeah, it's like, I, irony aside, I do still have to acknowledge that, like, I have played and completed Mario 64 dozens of times. <laughs> and so, like, you do just kind of get used to the little quirks. Like, you know, even the camera that you are you are mashing those C buttons on to, to get a good view. But... At the same time, it's like it it never felt like it was a super huge detriment as far as mo- you were you were learning alongside like the developers who had to learn how to put Mario on 3D, learning how to play like a 3D game like Mario 64. I also appreciate that, like, you know, going going into 3D, they they didn't necessarily put like a bunch of like guide rails on the gameplay itself because of like the open hubs and stuff like that and the thing that sticks out in my mind that like now that i'm looking back on it that i can really appreciate is if you think back to like the first mission of the snowy mountain level where you're doing just like the sliding race down the um monstrously large house (laughs) Mm -hmm. um (laughs) like there's there's that wall you can you can come up to and if you like notice the coins going into it you go through a secret passageway and it's yeah and so when i say like guide rails it's cool that like you're not confined to like whatever the mission literal level parameters have for you because there are like little secrets you can find here and there like even the very first level with that little transporter in bomb bomb battlefield it's cool that they took the chances with that yeah there's even like i'm i'm remembering uh you know i was just uh, replaying some levels and in um is it tall tall mountain there is the the secret slide that is just hidden in the the wall and i think there are a couple of signs that hint at it like oh I, I, the rumors say that there is a a, a secret hidden around here but the the game does a good job of i think it's right you do this long jump across the waterfall and then there's the little cloud guy that blows wind at you and what it kind of forces you to do is you think oh no that guy's gonna blow me away so you go uh, to like his extreme left and more often than not end up hugging that wall and guess what wall that is it's the one with the secret slide and it just ripples <laughs> a little bit and so i don't that's that stuff just feels cool even so many years later i feel like it's also worth pointing out like the game just has incredibly good music, like just right from the get go. It's it's so good. iconic. Yes, Koji Kondo like unchained for this one. It's really good. Yes, it, it it even took me like years and years to realize that that main theme that you hear on Bottom Battlefield like continues throughout the entire game, like remixed in a lot of different levels and. Even even on like modern systems or emulated, where you get much clearer versions, and I, from what I understand, it is it it, it is still like uh, MIDI tracks on the the Nintendo sixty four. Yeah, it just sounds so good. Like even when you get like super complex stuff in in like related games like Banjo Kazooie, like it stands toe to toe. It's just very listenable, like great music. I I remember um, a radio station we used to listen to growing up had a, I think it was just like a goofy, like Saturday morning show, like maybe even call in to win a contest. And the, the guy used tracks from the Super Mario 64 soundtrack. And I remember my mother called and asked specifically, said, is that a CD that we can buy? And he he ultimately said, like, yes, it is. However, it is, like, only 90-second clips of the, the, the song straight from the game. And, That's really cool, though. But still, I was, I was so excited just at the possibility of owning the Mario 64 music as a child. <laughs> <laughs> like, even the, the file select theme is so good and it's like such a simple melody that repeats over and over but it's so easily listenable mm. and that's led into what's honestly one of my favorite like video game music covers that's on youtube it's um it's like this mass collab that was uh spawned by cs guitar 89 it, the funny thing is like it, it was like a little bit earlier in like the video game music cover community and so i look back on it and i see like people who i i either wanted to work with or like i think at least one person that i actually have worked with who contributed to that 
that collab and it's just it, like it's such an amazing spawning point for creativity and I, I just wanted to gush on that <laughs> <laughs> well that's what we do here on this podcast talk about the things we love yes <laughs> it's true there's just so much to say about Mario 64. Like, if we were doing a real episode here, I'm sure we would say a lot. But it's just a <laughs> lovely little, uh, a lovely little world that you get to visit. And it was like a, a cartoon come to life for me when I first got my hands on it. Because the N64, the Nintendo 64, was like such a a big change for gaming as far as I was concerned at the time. I really thought it was like, well, f- the real 3D games that look great. At the time, it looked like so- leagues above all the other stuff I was playing, and Mario was like the first one, and Mario 64, that is. Man, I, I don't know. I, there's-, there's a reason why so many games kind of copied this one. Uh, I'm sorry, Luke, but um, you know, Banjo Kazooie is like heavily inspired by this one. Oh yeah, I'm not even going to argue that. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong, I love Banjo Kazooie. They're not even going to argue that. <laughs> nope. As far as 3D collectathons are concerned, that's uh, one of the better ones. But yeah, you look at it, you're know, like, because there are times when I'll, I'll be playing Banjo Kazooie and I'll see the little the painting of the level, and I think, am I going to jump? Do I have to jump in that? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this game's really good, lads. I think the best kind of compliment you can give the individual worlds and the hub world and everything is that it was one of those first instances of, hey, I've been plopped down in this world. I just want to run around without necessarily doing any objectives. Yeah. Which is, I think, the hallmark of a good open space. There are times when I'll run around a level and sometimes I'll just let Mario fall asleep somewhere. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, spaghetti. (laughs) I remember specifically doing that as a young child when I I didn't know where all the stars were and therefore like knew from magazines that you could get to the top of the castle, you could meet Yoshi, but like it uh, just ran up against like my own skill wall. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I've beat the game. I got enough to beat that last Bowser, but oh, well, I guess I'll just run around and maybe I'll stumble upon a star that I don't know about. And oh, just hours and hours of of trying to jump places where i'm not supposed to go and oh just like you said just the mark of a a game that is just fun to lose yourself in doing nothing that the game wants you to do and it's still fun (laughs) i have i had a lot of fun hanging around on big boo's haunt you know the ghost level i think that's it that's it like it was vaguely scary as a kid uh the music the droning music really gets you the little level gimmicks and of course everyone who played it for the first time as a young as a young and uh will remember the piano that you walk up on. <laughs> oh, of course mad <laughs> piano my favorite super smash brothers boss <laughs> <laughs> it is funny because i do think mario 64 may be more than other mario games i maybe it's just because i have not been that embedded in the mario fandom or the mario fandom just doesn't work like the sonic fandom does that there is some debate about the best version of mario 64 to play I I feel like I've put hands on most of them and they they mostly feel fine. Even ones that I know people have issues with, like the uh the Wii U emulated one, and there are drawbacks to like that 3D All Stars version, but Yeah, like the 3D All Stars version is based on the uh the Shindo version, which was the Japanese re release that added in Rumble but took out the backwards long jump glitch, stuff like that. Oh man. Yeah. Stuff that you, if you are, um, I wouldn't even say terminally online, but if you are online and know like Mario speed running, that that is just almost, that is transcended to become a funny joke in of itself, that backwards long jump. But but first we have to talk about parallel dimensions. Uh, yes. <laughs> and whether an A-press counts as an A-press. <laughs> <laughs> um i there has been just within the last couple of years some really supremely interesting things that have happened to mario 64 where i mean i don't even know where to start like how do you give a lay person's explanation to where the the source code for the game was i thought was part of the one of the big nintendo leaks and his no been- that, that's the thing like this was before that happened like specifically, you know, even when those source code leaks have come out, uh, there have been a lot of people who have been doing decompilations of 
mo- a lot of these N64 games and other system games basically trying to clean room, reverse engineer all the code and rewrite it, like rewrite it all from scratch, create equivalent functions so that you can basically recreate the code without using a single bit of the source code. And it's the same thing. It's like they don't want to actually look at the source code because if there is even a shred of original code in there. It's like, well, then that's, you know, potentially opening this stuff up to litigation or whatever. And so this is all, you know, completely original rewrites and everything. And because people have kind of torn into that game and figured out how everything works, it's basically given them the ability to rewrite and optimize and just do completely insane things with that game that no one would have ever thought possible. And as a result, like there was already a pretty intense super uh, Mario 64 ROM hacking scene, but it is blown up over the last couple of years with a lot of really like impressive and original ideas for ROM hacks, people building entire original games using that engine, uh, optimizing the original game so it can run like 60 frames a second on console. It's super duper impressive. And there's a lot of names I see coming up repeatedly. Like the big one is uh, Kaze Manuar, who's like the big name on the Mario 64 ROM hacking scene. I'm really looking forward to his return to Yoshi's Island uh, mod that's in the works now. But oh. he's also responsible for a lot of other like really well-known ones. Like the one I most recently played is one called Mario 64 Through the Ages, which is like a full-size 90-something star ROM hack that's like, it's all Mario courses, but they're, you know, themed after different areas of the world, like the Great Wall of China and Ancient Egypt oh, cool. and, you know, Planet Namek. And, uh... <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh, I, I do. Th- I think my favorite uh, project that I've stumbled upon and got working is the um, the project itself. I think is still called Render ninety six. I think yes. the uh, retro aesthetics is like their official like group name that they are. Uh, you know, they run their Discord out of. But that I, I think started as a they they wanted to. Um, I know their first huge project that I think is like mostly complete is they managed to track down the original source files for yeah. all of the um, Mario 64 textures. Um, so those could be like upscaled and, it, you know, brought into full HD. And then also they started, um, it, it's it's so cool. And I, I love how that if, if you're of a certain mind, it could seem blasphemous to like change <laughs> the game so much. But the other thing they've done is started creating models and level architecture to match the renders that Nintendo used to promote Mario 64. And it's still using like the, the game's manual and like the, the cover art yeah. to look like that and so they reference like mario kart 64 and other like nintendo 64 style renders that you know don't look anything like that in the game and it's just really cool to be jumping around mario 64 as like a 96 level computer render version of luigi that that just looks like how the game like always looked in your head as a child and it's, yeah. it's that's super what would be on cool. all the magazines it would look like that and you're like you're actually yeah. living what it was advertised to be you're finally playing the bull shots yes exactly it's it's very cool i i I really like it and they they've done cool things like uh used a similar system to like the the ds port and so you can play as luigi and wario and uh i'm just always excited to see see what what the the next update they have going is It's so cool to see how much life this game continues to have even to this day and how dedicated people are to finding new and exciting things to do with it. And I feel like we also need to pay at least a little bit of lip service to Super Mario 64 DS. I was going to say, yeah, that's another version. (laughs) It, It is. And like, that's another one that I feel like is at least a little bit controversial, you know, I, th- I think that the system it was on kind of hampered the gameplay a little bit, but you know, it's, it's interesting. Like I, I think that it's, it tried to do some cool things with it, bring in multiple playable characters, uh, add in some extra stars, some little smaller worlds, uh, do some like 
different mechanics and stuff like that. I think it's cool, but at the same time, I can see why people are like, this maybe took it a little bit too far. It kind of distributes the power-ups to between the characters, and you start off as Yoshi as opposed to Mario, which is, you've got to unlock Mario, which feels strange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you get to play as Mario's horse. <laughs> <laughs> which, hey, let me say, I do not subscribe to that. Yoshi is his own individual being who can do whatever he wants. He is not just a horse. Yep. But, you know, it is it is funny and I guess kind of ironic that the DS version uh, for a lot of the weird control schemes brought back, like, the run button. <laughs> like, you have to hold yeah. the, in, in a lot of the, the, the controls on that, uh, you have to hold down a button to actually run and build up speed. I do think um, the best way to play that DS version is to um, get the unofficial patch for, um, gosh, I haven't seen if it works on, like, a 3DS. I know it works on the Wii U. Yeah, uh, there is a, a a fan patch that just gives it full dual analog control, um, similar to uh, you know the original and like m- modern modern games as well. I, I've played that patch; it works pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I would say if you're if you're curious about that and get put off by the 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 controls, to give that one a shot because uh, I I do like a lot of the additions. I think the new characters are pretty cool and the the new extra levels, but it feels more more of a it feels unique enough to where it is not a replacement for the original but just like a you know like a, a compliment um, all-stars mega mix version yeah yeah exactly and to be honest i was mostly playing it for luigi's casino games like when yes. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was so I, fun. I must have spent hours playing that yoshi tile flip game <laughs> yep, I, I love that they just included those in like a lot of Mario titles going forward. Kind of like how Mario Brothers was in all of the advanced ones. Right. Yeah. They just put those those um, uh, party games in like the new Super Mario games, and uh, so you could link up with someone who like didn't even have the same copy of the game. Oh, that was that was fun. Uh, actually, we've ended up talking about Mario sixty four a lot longer than we thought we yeah. would. Uh, that cu- this is you know like what you say we we often talk about like Sonic for countless hours at a time. And that's why we started the podcast so we can record that and make something of it. Yeah, it also happens with other topics like Mario. So, and you're seeing that here. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a swell guy. I I always look forward to what Mario's got going going for him in the future. For sure. And Mario 64 is really one of those games that I can go back to time and time and time again and never get bored with it. Just a shame they took out like the mushrooms and everything that makes him go bigger. It feels wrong. Uh, the, he should he should shrink or be big and also have fire flower. But they took that out and I'm really mad about that. And things aren't the same as I remember them and I'm upset forever. But then they added it back in, you know, the DS version. So it's like... But they're they're changing continuity at again where now I'm supposed to believe that Super Mario, the big Mario, is Mario's default state and oh, it's just it's messing with something that they didn't need to mess with. You know what? Super Mario 64 is actually the worst game. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kill Mario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the movie's coming out soon. Maybe that'll do it. Um, oh oh no. Yeah. No, it won't. It <laughs> will be really, really successful regardless of how good it is. <laughs> oh, we can we can't go down this hole when we're trying to end the episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh just four days away, everyone who's listening to this when it comes out, by the way. Uh oh, is it? Ready. I didn't even realize. <laughs> so so black pill. Uh US and UK, so should we, should we make some comments about the movie just before it comes out and see if they come true in time? Uh, I think it'll... Happy birthday to me! <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I think it'll be okay, but it's also a cynical thing that I can't really get into right now. Uh, I just wish that it was... It, I wish it was made with a bit more love, but it does look like there are at least some people working on it who are doing really good and referencing things that I like. And I'm going to point at the screen and be like, I remember that thing, and I'll be <laughs> the exact sort of sap who will be duped into thinking it's good in the end because it did lots of things that i remember when i was a kid for personal and mental health reasons i must recuse myself from voicing my opinion (laughs) release the martin a cut (laughs) i i i am i'm I'm not a hater i'm a little bit trepidatious about the main actor for mario but the moment that i heard jack black was gonna be bowser i was sold and i will give it all my money because i'm a jack i'm a jack black fanboy 
<laughs> I am the same. I love Tenacious D back in the day, and I'm like, well, you had to go and do that to me, didn't you? I'm going to like this. It's just a shame that the guy who's going up against him is, is the Chris Brat. But anyway, it's fine. <laughs> well, I'm sure the movie will do uh, make a million squillion dollars, and it'll be gr- a squillion, you say? Yeah, squillion. <laughs> it's going to be really, really successful. They'll probably make a million more of them. It'll be like the new minions, and regardless of whether we like it or not. But that's enough of our cynicism for now, I guess. Do, 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 do. Now we're done with the podcast. Let's end it. (laughs) 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 Okay, uh, that's going to do it for us uh, for this uh, April Fool's episode. (laughs) Haha, were you fooled? I doubt it. (laughs) Haha, there is egg on your face. No, that's the other podcast, isn't it? We do another podcast? Uh... Oh, no, never mind. Uh, So anyway, uh, you can, there's our socials. Uh, You can find me at Falero at most at Twitter and all the other socials at F-A-U-L-E-R-R-O. Love that jingle. Mamma mia. <laughs> uh, you can find me on the socials at Rock the Jake, and you can find me on Twitch at Mr. Rock the Jake. You can, of course, find me on Twitter at Cyberlink420. And you can find me around the internet as Game Buddy, sometimes with a one, two, three, and on Twitter at Great Job Jeremy. That's G-R and the number eight. And as always, a special thanks to Amy Waters for the use of our theme song. Uh, You can find more of her work on YouTube and Bandcamp. And as always, remember to subscribe, review, share, if you want to hear more of us talking about Mario, which we do all the time, apparently. (laughs) Do that. So for our next episode, actually, we don't have one planned. I kind of wanted to, I just wrote in the outline that I want us to talk about Super Mario World at one point, because I really love that game. Are we talking about the (laughs) game? Are we talking about the show? You'll never know. Uh, Probably not. I mean, both, if it's up to me. Um. (laughs) Super Mario World. (laughs) Dino Bungum, Dino Dude! Um, So... (laughs) Yeah, that'll do us for this episode. Uh, join us in a, just a few days for our next actual episode, which will be our anniversary edition of The Hill is Always Greener. So come along for that. It's going to be quite good, I think. Absolutely. But this has been, for possibly the only time, The Kingdom is <laughs> Always Mushroomier. Uh, <laughs> So stupid. Uh, thanks, <laughs> yeah. thanks, v- thanks, Vbot, for that name. By the way, uh, we should probably credit him because he came up with that as a joke, and now we're doing it. But uh, yeah, uh, I have been Falero. I'm Rock the Jake. I'm Cyberlink, and I'm Game Buddy. And remember, if you do drugs, you'll go to hell before you die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, before we end the episode, I wanted to ask: Did you guys have like any weird things happening with your copies of Super Mario 64 before you played? Because like, I've got this audio and video that I recorded from when I played. Like, it, it creeps me out, and like, honestly, I haven't been sleeping that well. Can you can you go ahead and play that, Jeremy? Oh yeah, sure. Here you go. They do say every copy of Mario 64 is personalized. Oh, yeah, that's that sounds a little odd. Um, yeah, I've been I've been hearing this when I sleep. Chief, the, the lights just went out in my house. Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, no, 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 no. Mario's eyes are bleeding. No. Ah! Why the Reese's taco stand?